If you're looking for one of the best, most immersive Dolby Atmos home theater setups that you can get, these guys right here, the Sonos Era 300s, used as rear speakers in a Sonos system with a Sonos Arc and Subgen 3, is one of the most incredible audio setups you can get. I have multiple home theater setups around my house, including a complete 7.1 Dolby Atmos home theater, four in-ceiling speakers, two in-wall speakers, a subwoofer, all with a Denon receiver, and even with all those dedicated speakers in a home theater room, the Sonos Era 300s in a complete Sonos home theater is really, really good. It might be better than my 7.1 system. And if I could do it all over again, I would probably go with these over all those individual speakers. I'll explain why in a second. Number one, let's talk about sound. As you would expect, the sound is amazing. I paired two Era 300s with both a Beam and Sub Mini in a bedroom. That bedroom is about 18 by 13 feet, and it definitely fills the room. Honestly, the Era 300s are probably a little overkill in a room that size paired with a Beam and Sub Mini. I would go with Era 100s. The Era 300s still sound incredible in that setup, don't get me wrong. But when you really hear the difference they make is in a large room with a Sonos Arc and Sub Gen 3. I set up the two Air 300s on stands behind the sofa with my Arc and Sub Gen 3, did true play tuning. Well, I sent my son to do true play tuning around the living room. And after it was tuned, we fired up Top Gun Maverick. Playing one of the action scenes from Top Gun Maverick, it was incredible. It sounded like the planes were literally going from one end of the room to the other behind me and in front. Missiles sounded like they whizzed by your head. It really was incredible. It could simulate that much virtual surround in such a large room. And that's with high ceilings as well. We have about 11 foot ceilings in that room. That setup has no problem filling a room with enough volume and the Dolby Atmos really does sound great. I also watched some signature scenes from Avengers Infinity War, hence the t-shirt, right? My typical test scene is the one-on-one -on -one between Thanos and Doctor Strange and then Thanos and Iron Man and they once again performed excellently. It was actually hard to tell which I preferred, either my actual built-in 7.1 home theater system or the Sonos home theater system with two Air 300s in the rear. Now, when using the Air 300s as rear speakers, you have a couple options. You can mount them to the wall. Sonos sells those mounts for $80 a piece. It looks like a pretty slim mount. I don't have one of these to try, but definitely want to anchor that in and make sure you're in a stud when mounting these to the wall. They are pretty heavy. You can also use stands. Sonos sells a stand for $150, or 280 for a pair. Now, I also looked on Amazon to see what other options there were for the Aero 300, and there are actually many out there. I did buy a Santa stand, which is about $130, only $20 cheaper than Sonos' option. But after I set up both, I really do prefer the Sonos stand. I like the design, the color matches better. The Santa stand is kind of like an off-white compared to the Aero 300's stark white, which I really like. And there's a major height difference between the stands, so you definitely can't mix and match. And I do prefer the height that the Sono stand gives you for the Aero 300, as opposed to some of those third-party options. But I'll put links in the video description anyway to some of those stand options. When you use stands with the Aero 300s, keep in mind that the amount of power cable you have coming out of the bottom of that stand is gonna be pretty short. I had to run extension cables to outlets around the room. So if you're building a house, maybe you're getting to plan a room around your home theater, and you do wanna use these for rears, maybe look at building an outlet in the floor near where you're going to have the Aero 300s. If you're gonna be running that power cable to a wall, you will need an extension cord because you only get about two feet of cable after it comes out the bottom of the stand. Back to room size for just a moment. If you're looking for a complete home theater setup in the Sonos ecosystem, but it's a bedroom, medium to small size bedroom, you really can just go with a Sonos Beam and a Sub Mini. And if you wanna add a couple Aero 300s, that would be great but get the Aero 100s as your rear speakers, and that really will be an incredible experience. I actually used just a Sonos Beam and a Sonos Sub Mini in our bedroom, and that sounded really good too. So there is a place for some of those smaller speakers, but if you do have a large room, maybe a living room or a den, and you wanna be able to fill it with enough volume, I would recommend going with the Arc, Sub Gen 3, and Aero 300s. There was plenty of headroom volume-wise, and it really does give you an immersive experience. Real quick, I want to mention some quirks when using the Aero 300s in a home theater setup. And one of the big use cases that Sonos touts is for Dolby Atmos music. And for music, they do sound incredible. I've done several videos, both covering these speakers specifically, and every speaker in the Sonos lineup. You can check that video out above or in the description. But when it comes to home theater, I wish you could use the Aero 300s as left and right speakers in addition to rear. Just imagine having a Sonos Arc as your center channel and then these as both your left, right, and rear speakers. That would be amazing but you can't do that. You can only use the Aero 300s as rear speakers. Also, when these are added as surround speakers in a home theater setup, the forward-facing mid-tweeter is actually disabled. 
I get it from an audio perspective. Usually rear speakers, you don't want shooting directly at your head. You really want that height audio and surround, but it's kind of unfortunate because that's a huge part of the speaker that just doesn't get used in a home theater setup. Also, there's no way to use these in a home theater setup without one of Sonos' sound bars, either the Sonos Ray, the Sonos Beam, or the Sonos Arc. There's no way to get an HDMI signal into these. You can't just have two of these with your TV like you could with a HomePod 2 pair and use them for home theater. You have to pair these with a Sonos soundbar in order to use in a home theater setup. Honestly, it feels like a pair of Air 300s with like a Sonos Sub Mini would be an amazing home theater setup. Turn on that forward-facing mid-tweeter and it would probably be amazing, but you can't do that either. The only way to get audio into these speakers that's not wirelessly is through a line-in input, which is an eighth-inch audio jack or a headphone jack. That jack does not carry surround sound and definitely not Dolby Atmos, so that is not a way to get home theater audio into these speakers. They have to be used with a Sonos soundbar. So if you're in the Sonos ecosystem and you really want to upgrade your home theater experience or just get the best home theater possible, the Air 300s as your rear speakers is the way to go. When I was building my 7.1 home theater system, shopping for in-ceiling speakers was just a confusing and wild goose chase. You can buy in-ceiling round speakers for $50, $75, all the way up to $1,000 each. Yes, I could hear the difference and they sound really good, but I'm not gonna spend $1,000 per in-ceiling speaker for a 7.1 home theater. Not only that, but there's different measurements and sizes and angled in-ceiling speakers. Honestly, it is just way more simple, probably cost-effective, and will sound better getting some of these Aero 300s with an ARC and subwoofer. If you already have a Sonos ARC and a sub, and maybe you have some Sonos One SLs as your rear speakers and you wanna upgrade the system, I can tell you, you will hear a significant difference. Move those Sonos One SLs out on the patio. That's what I've done and paired those with a Sonos Move. That's a fun little setup. But if you want a full Dolby Atmos immersive experience, you don't want to run a bunch of cables or do in-ceiling and in-wall speakers, and you want something that looks nice also in your room, then the Aero 300s, an ARC, and a Subgen 3 is the way to go. Sonos sells that entire kit. It's called the Ultimate Immersive Set with ARC. It's $2,500, which again, if you added up all the individual in-ceiling speakers, plus a high-end receiver to try and build a 7.1 system out, you'll probably actually save some money going with this as opposed to trying to build it yourself. This is also a great suggestion for those who are maybe not technically savvy and you know don't want to deal with a home theater receiver. This set is a simple way to have that incredible Dolby Atmos sound, and then they can use these speakers with the Sonos app to play all the music through that same system they use to watch their movies. The only thing that can make it better might be a second subwoofer, which you can actually do, and I've thought about it. If you'd like to learn about all the Sonos speakers and figure out which are right for your room and situation, check out this video above or in the description, then subscribe to the channel. Lots of tech reviews coming out. Also, Apple News and WWDC is coming soon as well. And I'd love to hear from you in the comments. Tell me about your Sonos home theater setup, what you're thinking about upgrading. And if there's any double subwoofer users out there, I'd like to hear from you too. Is that worth it? Thanks for tuning in. We'll catch you in the next video.